Okay, so it's time. Um, Francois here is going to talk about uh, retro computing. I have to say I'm surprised there's so many people interested in this. So am I. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I originally picked this talk because um, I'm very selfish and I'm interested in this myself. So I, I thought I will have someone talk about this. Francois here volunteered. And I hope you enjoy the talk. Thank you. Um, yep, this way. So, um, welcome. Uh, yeah, well, I've never seen so many people uh, at one of my talks. <laughs> Usually I talk about haiku, uh, there's the, the crowd is much smaller, but uh, so yeah, I'm also into uh, antiques. Uh, I've already uh, uh, given a talk about uh, freeing your antiques at uh, the Libre Software meeting two years ago. Uh, so I, I thought I would give it a, a, a different twist uh, this year. Um, uh, so let's talk first about the really old boxes from the 80s. Uh, you know, I had an Auric Atmos. Uh, uh, most of you probably know about the C64 c from Commodore and uh, other stuff like Apple II uh, and many others. Uh, so um, basically those were small boxes with an 8-bit CPU, uh, either uh, 6502 or Z80. Or there, are, there were many at the time uh, mm -hmm. before Intel mm -hmm took the, all the whole market. Um, most of them had uh, much less than 64 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, that's not much. Um, and usually you just had text display. If you were lucky you could get some graphics, but like 200 by 200 or something like this. Um, some had a sound chip that could play some tunes. <coughs> and most of those <laughs> had um, a cassette tape for storage. So you had to play, type C load, blah, 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 and then go get one, two, three coffees, and maybe <laughs> it didn't crash while loading your game. Um, but some of them had uh, expensive floppy drives, uh, yeah, and some had serial ports, but not all of them, and most of them run, run the Microsoft Basic uh, language in the room. Um, but some guy um, wrote a nice operating system uh, for the C64 that's called Contiki. Um, and uh, he later, uh, well, later people ported it to other architectures. Um, and then he im himself uh, reused it for his PhD thesis um, as an operating system for the Internet of Things. So uh, you see, it can get to uh, interesting things. Uh, so it's based on proto threads which actually uh, share a single stack for all, all the, the threads. It's quite interesting. And they even have an IPv4 and IPv6 stack that's certified for, by Cisco. So it's, whoa, nice. Uh, and a, quote, graphical interface um, that can even run as a VNC server. Uh, and it has a web browser, IRC, and, and it, looks like, it looks like this. Um, if it does work, it might actually have I might actually be able to run it live. <coughs> That's a C64 emulator. Oh, oops, the window is here. Um, I've activated the turbo mode here because it's a bit slow. Um, <coughs> but yeah, it kind of works. It's loading quite a lot of, um, of stuff. Um, there we go. You disabled it. Uh, oh, did I? Yes. Uh, I think it's. You have 100 percent speed. <coughs> oh yeah, right. That's weird. Uh, ah. Uh, it looks like this. So you can actually yeah, open menus and run 
the network configuration, <coughs> and and yeah. Well, I don't have a network setup, but there's a web browser, IRC client, um, and a lot of interesting useless stuff. <laughs> so that's for Kentucky. Um I put an example, the uh, sample code for the, the About box uh, here, uh, one page and second page. So you see uh, process thread, blah, 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 and then it's event based, so uh, it switches the threads on when waiting for events. Uh, there are many operating systems for those uh, old machines. Uh, some of them are free and open source uh, software. Others are uh, more of, well, I don't really care, or uh, the source code is here, but I don't care, whatever. Um, now let's talk about uh, Newer CPUs like 1632-bit. Uh, There's of course the uh, uh, 68K uh, with uh, the whole family: Atari, uh, Amiga, Mac, Next, and all those. Uh, ARM. ARM was born uh, by Acorn. Uh, they created the CPU for their own machine. The first, the Archimed, uh, and then the RISC PC, and then many others. And the 8086 uh, 80, for the PC. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so those platforms were a bit better. Most had the mouse uh, and graphics up to VGA or something. Um, sometimes 266 colors, sometimes better. Um, <coughs> most are most sound and uh, usually floppy drives. And uh, lucky people had a hard drive. And it. <laughs> It was getting better for networking. Ethernet wasn't really the standard uh, at the time. Uh, of course, they run B free BSD, uh, NetBSD, sorry, uh, because NetBSD has been, has been ported to uh, most architectures, even toasters, uh, I've heard. Uh, so yeah, you need an MMU, of course, and enough RAM, but you might be able to get uh, an X server to run. Uh, new Linux used to support those machines long ago. Um, yeah, yeah, still does. Great. Uh, Debian stopped su officially supporting them, but uh, you can get uh, some uh, archives. Uh, there's uh, RiskOS, which isn't really free software. Uh, the source code has been published, but it's a non-commercial uh, license, so, well, kind of. Uh, but their application database is nice because it says if this is a shareware, a freeware, and GPL v2, whatever, so you can actually uh, search for uh, apps uh, that are free software. The Atari hardware, <coughs> which, uh, well, was quite nice. Uh, the Falcon had a um, full uh, uh, O3, O30 uh, CPU, so you had an MMU you could run. There is also 060 accelerator for Falcon. Yeah, right, exactly. I, I didn't mention uh, that. Um, and some clones, and uh, there's a new hardware called the Fire B, which is, is a cold fire CPU. So uh, it's it's really nice. It's a small small box, um, and an FPGA um, emulation. And there's Aronim, which you can run on your uh, machine, uh, your PC, which emulates uh, kind of a clone, uh, all 40 clone. <coughs> so there are free software um, operating systems for the Atari. There's Emutos, uh, and there's Mint which isn't the Linux Mint distro, it's Mint is not TOS, um, which is free software now. And it's preemptive multitasking. It has a Unix-ish uh, API and even a U uh, drive because it, it was like the DOS, there is uh, A, B, C uh, drive and, and there's a U for Unix drive which has slash proc slash blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's a bit weird, but it's funny. And maybe a haiku someday, I started a, a haiku port, but, well. <coughs> um, and there are, uh, I've put up uh, a lot of uh, links. All the blue, uh, blue words are hyperlinks uh, in the PDF, and so you can click them. Um, yeah, most uh, authors for those platforms don't really care about free software. So sometimes they publish the source code, but they either don't care what people do, or they say, oh, just don't do commercial stuff. So, so it's not really free software. So uh, maybe if you beg them, 
they might think, oh yeah, I could put a license on it on them. Uh, so just try and, and mail them, who knows. Uh, some more links. Um, yeah, Amiga hardware. Uh, so maybe some of you <coughs> weren't born at the time, uh, but there was a, a huge war between Atari and Amiga, so, well. Uh, but they're friends now. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah. I know both sides. So um, the Amiga usually had uh, a cheaper version of the the CPUs, so you had to add an accelerator card to get an MMU and well GNU Linux or B BSD. So, uh, but there are still new hardware as well in the in the Amiga world. The new Vampire 2 accelerator, but it lacks an MMU. Ah. And FPU. And FPU, right? Um, there's a Minimig, which is also an FPGA emulation. You can also run me on the list. <coughs> Exactly, um, and uh, there are a lot of forks f of the emulator UAE. So I didn't really put a link because I didn't know which one to, to put. <coughs> and there are PPC machines, but well, that's cheating. Um, so Aros, um, it's it used to be Amer Amiga Replacement Operating System. Now it's Amiga Research Operating System. Um, so it's compatible with the original one, but it's free software. And it includes the full desktop. There's also ARM port. <coughs> I will not say that ARROS is binary compatible. Well, the goal of ARROS was to be binary oh. compatible, and yeah, they kind of slipped away from, from that. And yes, as I said, it, uh, there's an ARM port uh, as well. Um, so I don't really have a UAE setup uh, working right, uh, right now. Applications on Aminet <coughs> nowadays more and more <coughs> mention exact license. <coughs> in past, I did Amiga programming in previous mm -hmm. millennium. In past, many authors also included license. <coughs> yeah, I just uh, had a look at Aminet and uh, uh, the, the directory listing doesn't mention the license, but there are readmes which actually, Aminet yes, mention the license. Huge. For, yeah. for years it was the biggest software <coughs> collection. Uh, so I don't have uh, UAE uh, working, it's just crashing today, I don't know why. Uh, but that's uh, Aronim, so it's the, the Atari uh, emulator uh, with the, the basic uh, desktop uh, from uh, Mint. So, well, it's not really customized, it can look a lot nicer than that. <coughs> but yeah. Uh, and uh, this morning I saw a tweet from someone saying, oh, uh, the, the assembler source code has been published for this, so I'd figure I'd put it here. Um, uh, some more references. I probably forgot some uh, links, but yeah. Uh, so wait, what about the PC? <coughs> uh, well, now there is still free DOS. People are still working on a DOS operating system for the PC. That's, that's weird. And uh, uh, JEM, uh, GAM has been... Uh, open source some time ago, uh, so you can actually uh, run a, a gem desktop. Uh, 386BSD, uh, which the last uh, published version was uh, uh, zero, 0 0.1 or something until very recently. <coughs> and then the uh, latest one has been uh, published as uh, uh, with, with the source code. So yeah, it's nice. <laughs> I've seen it um, uh, in uh, Capital du Libre uh, some months ago. Uh, and then there's uh, Calmira 2, which is actually a, a, a shell for Windows 3. Uh, so yeah, it's it's weird. I think there's even uh, Calmira Vista or something. Yeah. People are crazy. <coughs> and then there's uh, wait, there's Multidesk OS. It's a um, universal operating system that runs <laughs> everywhere. And okay, that's just a troll, but I had to mention it. Uh, there are many funny libraries around that could be used to port software to those platforms. <coughs> uh, like for games, there are uh, Allegro, uh, SDL, well the 1.2 SDL because the 2.0 actually has been rewritten from scratch, so they ditched all the antique stuff, so it's just Win, Android, uh, and uh, Mac OS, uh, so well. <laughs> And yeah, and Unix with uh, X11. <coughs> um, 
so people know about uh, N curses and, um, and Linux, but uh, there is also PD curses, which has been ported to uh, many other platforms, including SDL. So if you have SDL, you can actually run curses applications uh, as well. Uh, there are other stuff like uh, Portly, but I couldn't find a license, so I, I'll probably mail them to see if they can put a proper license on it. Uh, Native file dialog is useful, useful with uh, SDL apps, so you can actually have um, the single uh, window SDL apps, but at least you have uh, native file requesters, so it's a bit more native. And yeah, some in interesting apps like uh, QEMAX, uh, written by Fabrice Bellar, so you probably know about QMU, FFmpeg, and other uh, weird stuff like this. Uh, well, it's this guy. is He's a crazy, crazy guy. Um, uh, yeah, Rhapsody IRC is a bit uh, simpler than ERC to port. Um, <coughs> and yeah, OCP to have some music. <coughs> and then there's the browser. We need internet access and we need a web browser. Um, there's NetSurf, which started as a browser for uh, the RISC PC on uh, RISC OS. Um, and it works with uh, 16 megabytes of RAM. <coughs> and since then, it has been ported to um, GNU Linux, so you can use GTK or the frame buffer for embedded um, devices. Uh, I ported it to Haiku. Uh, it's been ported to Atari, uh, Mint, and Amiga OS, so also ours, um, and other mostly proprietary platforms, uh, and React OS because it's been ported to Windows. So, <coughs> and uh, so yeah, it supports HTML5 and CSS. Well, most of CSS, <coughs> and uh, someday JavaScript should work. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and then those um, nice guys from uh, NetServe, they also maintain a tool chain uh, across GCC with all the libs that are required for NetServe. Uh, so basically you just ins install their tool chain and you can actually uh, start porting applications um, to those platforms. Uh, so it's really, really useful. Uh, oh, well, I, I was fast. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, so you might get more uh, infos in my uh, previous talk at uh, RMLL. Um, yeah, thanks, and time for questions. <coughs> Question? Yep. Um, have you tried porting stuff to any of the sort of legacy Uh, so the question was, uh, have you tried porting any of these uh, to um, handheld devices like Palm? Uh, actually, I do have an HP iPad, not iPad, iPad, uh, the small uh, Windows <laughs> CE device, but uh, I've, I've passed by uh, some uh, toolchain uh, stuff, but it wasn't really maintained. Um, I think there are... Uh, ports like uh, VLC has had been ported to those, uh, but it's not really maintained uh, either. Uh, there's stuff like uh, uh, PUTTY, so the SSH client, but I'm not sure it's really maintained either uh, for um, Windows CE. Um, I didn't really look into um, Palm stuff, uh, so, but yeah. Please have a look. When it comes to Palm devices, <laughs> if, you take, if you ignore the non-ARM ones, you can run <laughs> Linux, uh, some version of Linux usually, because it was developed, Linux for Palm, Palm ARM devices was developed when they were kind of still not <coughs> so, not so old ones. Uh, I don't know how it is with mainline, so you are probably stuck with something like two six kernels. For uh, Windows C devices, <coughs> for many of them, there were also Linux ports at missed levels of uh, use for usefulness. Yes. For Motorola based Palms, which means everything ri not running Palm OS 5, you just <coughs> stay with Palm OS. 
Uh, so to sum up for the PAM devices, the ARM uh, devices from PAM, yeah. you can run Linux, uh, and the, for the uh, 80, um, uh, 68K uh, ones, well, just stick to PAM OS, and for Windows CE, uh, there's, yeah, I recall seeing uh, Linux ports uh, to those as well, yeah. You had familiar for iPads, mm. there were sharp made Zauruses, and we had open Zaurus for it. Yeah, I noticed the, um, the net, on the NetBSD ports pages, uh, the Zorus port is still uh, mentioned, yeah. Any chance to flash any of those on uh, older BlackBerry devices? What? Sorry? Any chance to flash some of that software on older BlackBerry devices? Oh, BlackBerry, um, well, I don't, didn't really um, <coughs> um, works with BlackBerry, so I can't really say what right. you can do with BlackBerry, sorry. Also a porting question. Um, have you tried porting it to, um, well, ca uh, cartridge-based uh, systems where you put in a cartridge and, well, it gives you additional RAM or, well, storage to run those OSs? Because I think if you run a browser, you start having a lot of tabs. Well, we all know that tabs take up RAM. And I think that these cartridges would actually well benefit, um, well, the browser would benefit from the cartridges, of course. Uh, well, you mean for... I think, I'm, I think I'm stuck in consoles, am I? Yeah, the, well, some people actually, so the question was, uh, did you try to um, port uh, these things uh, using cartridges uh, on <coughs> devices? Uh, well, it's mostly consoles and Atari ST, or maybe. Uh, on the Atari, Amiga, you b usually uh, you have an accelerator board with a lot of RAM, so it's not oh. really that much of a concern, because the Falcon was like uh, 14 megs, mags, of RAM, so it's a bit small. Um, so uh, yeah, but uh, for the consoles, actually, yeah, I didn't really look into it because I, because I'm not really a gamer myself. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I've seen um, several stuff for the consoles, so you probably can find it uh, as well. And usually, those those <coughs> hardware which used cartridge as a main storage was slow enough for most people to not consider porting anything to it. So yeah, uh, the cartridge, cartridge, cartridges, sorry, usually um, are banked memories. You had to switch banks, on and some yeah, but it was just memory, and some you could take <coughs> take over the whole machine. Yeah, but usually it's it was a bit slower, uh, depending on the cartridge. Some are, were actually replacing the CPU. And yeah, that depends <coughs> on, on machine. Like SimbaOS, uh, which I mentioned, which is uh, an operating system for the uh, Z80 machines, like. Uh, uh, Amstrad, uh, and, uh, so basically uh, it, it works much better, better with uh, an add-in add uh, card which actually replaces the CPU and so yeah. Yep? Well, uh, have you ported text to I question, but uh, you were demonstrating the Commodore 64 OS. Hmm? It had a web browser and an IRC client, but how do you get network connection to the Commodore? Because I don't believe it has the network, does it? Mm -hmm. Uh, so the question was, um, you mentioned, uh, well, Kentucky and web browser, RC client, there's an email client as well. Uh, so how do you connect on, to the internet on them? Well, um, you can use, uh, I mentioned, um, uh, serial ports. Um, so you can run uh, SLIP or maybe even PPP, but I'm not sure. SLIP is not. You do have 2,200 on the Yeah. You, SLIP is way enough. You don't need to uh, log in with a password and whatever. There's also uh, cartridge with Ethernet. And yes, there are also cartridges with uh, uh, an it Ethernet chip. And it actually, uh, some of them actually have their own IP stack on them. So you can actually just send, send them the... You should be able to run a Commodore 64 network standalone without a computer that intervenes and makes IP into serial, etc. There was a modem back then. I don't know if that maybe... Well... <laughs> the, actual, uh, the big modem. Yes, you can actually use a modem, which basically is just uh, a device uh, over a serial uh, line. So, <coughs> yeah. And there, there used to be a, a C64 web server running Kentucky. Uh, it probably still runs. So you can actually uh, access web pages uh, served from a C64 machine. Uh, yeah. There is a cartridge with a, a SD card <coughs> and also an expansion for uh, Ethernet. Ethernet uh, it's called RRNet. 
So yes, there's an extension cartridge with a SD card slot and Ethernet uh, card. Uh, there are also, I didn't mention because I was talking desktop, but there are uh, 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 floppy disk emulators that you just plug uh, to replace the physical floppy drive uh, and you can just put a, an SD card in so you can actually have plenty of software on them. Uh, yes? Yeah. <laughs> Like to say that I've actually plotted with girls Sorry? one on top of lines. <coughs> Sorry? I took my course, I plotted with girls to actually one on top of lines, so I can run it on my. I, I didn't. Sorry. I've managed to port with girls to one on top of Linux. Oh yeah, yes, you uh, you ported risk uh, yes, on top of Linux. Yes. Ah, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I think. I need to see nice. this. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. I have a qu question. Yeah, here. Yeah. Have you uh, taken a look at some of the actual hardware replacement projects uh, to replace the actual computers with uh, modern old computers, like the Firebee or the Ataris? Uh, yeah, I have a friend which uh, does have a Firebee, so it's it's really nice. It's a Did you bring it here? <coughs> sorry. Did you bring it here? Uh, no, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, it's small. It's it's funny. It has a an Intel battery, so it can actually just unplug it and it can still run for an hour or so. <coughs> so yeah, maybe one more question. You, well, thank uh, you, you. You didn't mention the, app, the Apple II. <coughs> any, any free and open source <coughs> operating systems or something like that that has been ported? <coughs> Not ported, but <coughs> free software that can run on the Apple II. Um, so I didn't mention Apple II. Uh, well, uh, Contigi has been ported yeah. to Apple II. Yeah. I think I've seen uh, what was it called? Uh, GEOS or yes. something? Yes. I'm not sure it's free software. No, it's no, it's not. It's, yeah. it's not. Okay. Well, thank you very much.